untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic game to video. Today I was taking a look at a red white dwarf tribal deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and of course we're gonna have a few vehicles in this deck as well to synergize with our dwarves and one of the centerpieces of the deck is a Depala pilot exemplar, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three legendary dwarf pilot giving other dwarves we control plus one plus one and each vehicle we control gets plus one plus one as long as it's a creature and then whenever Depala becomes tapped we may pay x mana and if we do reveal the top X cards of our library and put all dwarf and vehicle cards from among them into our hand and the rest on the bottom so it gives us a bit of card advantage as well. And then another very important creature in the deck is Magda Brazen Outlaw, the 2-1 legendary dwarf berserker giving other dwarves we control plus one plus oh and whenever a dwarf we control becomes tapped we get to make a treasure token and we can also sacrifice five treasures to search our library for an artifact or dragon card and put it onto the battlefield. And we've got a nice selection of one-off powerful artifacts and dragons to search up, including Glorybringer, the 5 mana 4 4 dragon with flying and haste that we can exert when it attacks, meaning it's not going to untap during our next untap step. And if we do, we get to deal 4 damage to target a non dragon creature an opponent controls. Then we've got Goldspan Dragon, the 4 4 flying dragon with haste that makes a treasure token whenever it attacks or becomes a target of a spell, and we can sacrifice treasure tokens for 2 mana instead of just 1. Then we've got Sky Sovereign Console Flagship as a very powerful vehicle that can come into play dealing 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker and when it attacks it gets to do the same and a 6-5 flyer with just a crew cost of 3. And finally we also have a one-off copy of Embercleave as a very powerful equipment that attaches to one of our creatures right away when it enters the battlefield giving it plus 1 plus 1, double strike and trample. It's another great way to end the game. And all of these cards of course we can also just cast in a regular game if we happen to draw them since they're still castable at 5 mana. Then we also have the full playset of Heart of Kiron as the author vehicle in the deck, a 4-4 legendary artifact vehicle with flying and vigilance and a crew cost of 3 and we can also remove a loyalty counter from a planeswalker we control rather than pay Heart of Kiron's crew cost. No planeswalkers in the main deck here, although we could easily play a planeswalker like Gideon Blankblade or Chandra Torch of Defiance if we want to stray away from some of the dwarf synergies a little bit. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck at 1 mana, we've got the full playset of Toolcraft Exemplar as another powerful dwarf, gets plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn at the beginning of combat if we control an artifact, and can also gain first strike if we control 3 or more artifacts. And to enable Toolcraft Exemplar we were also playing the full playset of Thraben Inspector, a 1-2 human soldier, so not a dwarf unfortunately, but when it enters the battlefield we get to investigate, meaning we can make a clue token which is an artifact we can sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card, or we can just keep it around to enable Toolcraft Exemplar. Then we also have two copies of Shock as a cheap removal spell, dealing two damage to any target. And at two mana we've got a bit more removal with two copies of Lightning Helix, dealing three damage to any target and gaining three life. Then besides the full playset of Magda, we also have the full playset of Rimrock Knight as a 3-1 Dwarf Knight that cannot block. Can also use the Boulder Rush Adventure first, giving target creature plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. And then we also have the full playset of Veteran Motorist as a 3-1 Dwarf Pilot that when it enters the battlefield lets us scry 2. And when the motorist crews a vehicle, that vehicle gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. So great alongside our Heart of Kiron and Sky Sovereign. Then at 3 mana we've got our full playset of Depala, as well as two copies of Plark, Dean of Chaos and Augusta, Dean of Order. Can play Plark for 2 mana to potentially discard and draw, can be useful if we draw multiples of the same legendary creature, and the 5 mana activated ability can also provide a bit of advantage. And then Augusta, Dean of Order is a main reason why we're playing this card, because other tapped creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0, other untapped creatures we control get plus 0 plus 1, and whenever we attack, untap each creature we control, and then tap any number of creatures creatures we control. So for each creature we can decide whether it gets one additional power or one additional toughness, making it difficult for the opponent to set up any favorable blocks. And Augusta is also very synergistic with Magda, since we can potentially attack with a whole bunch of dwarves, making treasures with Magda's ability, and then untap all those dwarves and then tap them again with Augusta's ability, making even more treasure tokens in the process, so we can potentially sacrifice five of those to search up any of our curve toppers. And then the mana base also has a few additional mana sinks to make use of Magda's treasure tokens, and those include two copies of Shatter Skull Smashing as a potential removal spell, and two copies of Emiria Skull which can generate two 4-4 white angel creature tokens with flying. 
and then we've got four copies of Sacred Foundry, four Needle Verge Pathway, four Inspiring Vantage as some nice red white dual lands, and then three of each basic land. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Probably play a tap to Miria's Call here. Turn to... Against Spikefield Hazard. Don't have high confidence in Magda surviving, so maybe kick things off with Heart of Kiron into the Pala. Opponent Monoret so far. And Magmatic Channeler to play. And we get to it for 5. And next turn Magda can start generating treasure, hopefully. Sadly, Wizard's Lightning kills Depala, and Magda by herself is not enough to crew Heart of Kiron. So that does slow us down quite a bit. Second Channeler. And an attack for one. Shock the draw. Not incredibly helpful here. Play Magda. And then, do I keep up Shock at the cost of two life? Probably not. Can use Glorybringer to crew Heart of Kiron, although might as well just attack for four at that point and take out a Channeler. So our two legendary dwarves taken care of. But yeah, Glorybringer is going to be pretty strong here. And I think it's worth it to exert since Channeler is close to being a four-powered creature as well. Alright, and then we're hoping to draw one of our three powered creatures to crew Heart of Kiron. Spikefield Hazard plus maybe a three damage burn spell. A lightning strike to finish off Glorybringer. Wasn't gonna get to untap, but our opponent wanted to pump their channeler anyways here. And a Vaishino Paramancer we can potentially shock. Alright, Spectre we can draw right away. And see what we pick up. Right, Toolcraft can crew hearts. Attack for four. And we'll keep Shock at the ready. Since they already control a wizard, there's no real immediate need to kill the Paramancer. Chandra can maybe take out two crafts. And then Shock can finish off Chandra at the very least. Time to die. Paramancer stays back to protect Chandra. I guess we'll just take our draw step, since if we draw another burn spell, I just want to go face, and we should have the mana to cast whatever else we top deck. And the Rimrock Knight means we just have lethal here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. Toolcraft into either Heart of Kiron or Magda. Is a great start. Opponent on some sort of Jeskai deck. Temple of Epiphany comes into play tapped. And a brainstorm. Okay. So we get to connect with our tool crafts, and I'm liking Heart of Kiron here as a play. So we don't overextend into a potential sweeper. 
And next turn we'll be able to crew hard, generate a bunch of treasure thanks to Magda. And the extra treasure will come in handy when we want to play Glorybringer on turn 4. Prismari Command takes out Toolcraft. Also could have destroyed Heart of Kiron, by the way. But our opponent choosing to draw to discard too, maybe trying to set up their combo as we see Unburial Rites discarded. Another Toolcraft, great replacement. So we can play Toolcraft and Magda. And then I can tap both Dwarves to crew Heart of Kiron, since we can crew more than necessary. And that will allow us to make two treasure. Could have also waited until the beginning of combat, not that it would have mattered here. And I could play Thraben Inspector. I get to play my Glorybringer next turn anyway, so sure. I guess the upside is that we get to save more treasure for later. But I'm okay getting an extra creature in play here. Faithless Looting is going to maybe discard a creature to reanimate with rights. Or discards Ultimatum to then cast with Mizzix Mastery. So that's going to be hard to beat as well. Second Looting. Discards Time Warp. So yeah, I'm assuming that our opponent can probably figure out a way to win next turn. If they have a Mystic Mastery for now, we'll play Glorybringer. Crew Heart of Kiron. And we can put our opponent to one. Which sadly isn't zero can sacrifice a clue, but we won't have any mana left. So let's see if our opponent can combo kill us here. Yep, there's a Mystic's Mastery and Ultimatum. So we'll see what pile they give us. Alright, so Omniscience, Time Warp and Scholar. So, I think I'm forced to give them the Omniscience and then hope that their hand just isn't good. And then not give them Scholar. They get to take an extra turn. Yeah, I don't think I can afford to give them Scholar. So, yeah, opponent can take an extra turn and cast spells from their hand for free, but their hand isn't very large. So if they don't have another ultimatum, we might be alright. Right, opponent plays lands, one card left, and gets to take an extra turn. They can flash back cards for free, only cards from hand, so we'll see what they can do here. Looting, opponent goes digging, so they need another ultimatum. Discards two lands, and plays a land, so opponent looks to be pretty dead here. No creature to reanimate, they can flashback looting, they probably shouldn't have played their lands before doing so. Because now they don't have anything to discard to looting to keep in hand. Alright, so yeah, we survived Emergent Ultimatum, doesn't happen very often. But our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a beautiful hand. Got kind of the perfect curve going on here. We get to choose whether we play turn to heart or Magda. Kind of depends what we're up against. Since making treasures as soon as possible might be worth it in some matchups where we don't expect the opponent to remove our early creatures. 
turn one forests into a lobster beast adventured. Five five lobster beasts on the ground can be a pretty sizable blocker. Luminarch pumps the one one attacks. We'll take it. So probably go for Heart of Kiron still. And then I'll have to attack. Next turn we can play Depala and potentially attack with hard both on offense and have it back as a blocker. Sample Garden untapped, put on maybe a green-white company deck. Archon of Emiria limits us to casting one spell per turn. Alright, so we'll play Depala. And then if Toolcraft attacks, it would trade for Archon. I could crew Hearts with Depala and attack with both Toolcraft and Heart, or I could keep Heart on defense. Move to Combots, crew Heart with Toolcrafts. And that way I can still crew my Heart of Kiran on defense. So even if they add another counter to Archon, we will be able to block it. Can still use the Boulder Rush Adventure during the opponent's turn. Okay, Vivian lets the opponent play at instant speed. So that's quite nice alongside Archon. Wine less than you. So our opponent doesn't have any good attacks. I could attack with Heart of Kiron. For opponent double blocks, I could Boulder Rush to finish off Archon and the token, and then we can still play something else, second main. Yeah, maybe that's the play. And then do I use Depala? I'm going to use one mana on Boulder Rush, three mana left over. So I can pay one from the Pala and still play Magda. Planes on top. So we'll send both and Vivian. Put on double blocks as we suspected. <laughs> you have to do better than that. And maybe better off playing Rimrock Knight over Magda. And then next turn we get to make a bunch of treasure as soon as we attack. We did lose our artifact for toolcraft at the moment. A different line would have involved just killing Vivian by using Boulder Rush on the unblocked creature. Which also could have been reasonable. Although she wouldn't have been able to minus two, so we're just playing around or opponent playing creatures at instant speed. And we can kind of see the Lovestruck Beast face up here. Can play Magda. And Thraben Inspector now turns on Toolcraft too. And then sends Rimrock at probably the opponent's Toolcraft on Vivian. And I'm fine if they trade for Lovestruck Beasts. And I want to send the slightly weaker creature at our opponent since I would rather take out Vivian as opposed to trading for Aspirant. That looks good. Make two treasure. Sadly, no longer get the first strike on Toolcraft since we needed those three artifacts beginning of combat. Right, they also have an Elves to Chumblock. 
that's fine. Can also potentially cast a second main smashing to finish off some creatures or planeswalkers. Alright, opponent goes for the trades. So smashing, finishing off Vivian seems reasonable. Or I can just keep all my mana, sacrifice a clue here, and set up an even bigger smashing later. Yeah, if our opponent uses the minus two on Vivian, they can no longer play creatures at instant speed, so that's probably okay. Alright, it's gonna plus on Lenor Elves instead. And we get to crack our clue. Back up Depala and a Toolcraft. So I could smashing for X equals four, killing Vivian and Elves, forcing the opponent to play whatever they have. And then we can play accordingly. Alright, so they might have a collected company in hand. Yeah, probably still fine to attack with at least the Pala since we have a backup. And then I'm gonna decline to use the Pala's ability. Sadly, they found a Lovestruck Beast, so that can eat the Dipala for free. And the Spellbinder is going to have a look, make our author Dipala more expensive. So, still going to decline. So, that was a good company hit. Play Toolcrafts. And Luminarch enables the Lovestruck Beast to attack as well. Grow Spellbinder, which gets in for four. Next turn presents lethal in the air. Although Sky Sovereign's a lucky top deck. So that can take out Spellbinder. And then probably no need to make any attacks. And then we want to make sure to crew Sky Sovereign, even if they don't attack, just to make treasure with Magda. Put on Dos and the Beast. We'll just jump with the Thraben Inspector. Apparition can exile Magda here. Decides to go with Toolcrafts. We know we can play the Pala to crew Sky Sovereign. And draw another one. Alright, well, I think we have lethal here. We can play the Pala. Doesn't matter which one. That'll crew Sky Sovereign, which can attack. And I can sacrifice five treasures to get whatever number of win conditions we want. But the most stylish way to win is by getting an Amber Cleave. And there we have it. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very promising hand. Probably okay playing this one tapped for now. And then we'll have to decide if we want to play Motorist or Magda on turn 2. Alright, Elves, I would have liked to shock. Hmm, let's see. Probably still okay to let the opponent untap with Elves, if they're playing Elf Tribal we can just kill their Lord next turn if they run it out. And then for now, probably Motorists. And some Goldspan Dragon, 
probably don't need another 5 mana play, but I will keep a land. And then try and get our Sky Sovereign online as soon as possible. Uh, another Elves. Into Scavenging Ooze. Alright, so it's not quite Elf Tribal. So, can play Magda. Attack, see what happens. I'm okay if the Ooze trades for Motorists. Or if the Elf trades. And then now I probably kill the ooze before it can grow. And next turn we can already play Sky Sovereign to take out the last elf. Opponent is Gruul. Take one. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll attack first. No harm in doing so. Take out Elves, and Motorist can crew the Sky Sovereign to keep decimating the opponent's board. And our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a very nice opening hand. Turn to potentially play Magda, which will give us a nice mana boost. I guess turn one Mountain, I guess we'll play it safe and play Rimrock Knight. And hold Magda until we can generate a treasure token immediately. And we do see Shock take care of the Rimrock Knight. Steamkin, I'll have to Shock myself. So Magda plus Shock seems fine. So trading some resources back and forth. Sky Sovereign's not a bad top-end card to have in this matchup. And a shock takes care of Magda. Alright, so line 5 gives us Sky Sovereign. Lightning Strike kills Depala. Still have a Rimrock Knight to crew Sky Sovereign. Assuming we can find land 5, which we did. Our opponent has to use a shock before it goes away, so they won't necessarily have a removal spell for Rimrock Knight. And then we probably kill the Firebrands so they can't take out Rimrock Knight as easily. Could also play Inspector Pump it with Rimrock Knight, but since Rimrock Knight can block, we're better off using that to crew. And yeah, I think we take out Firebrand, despite Lava Runner being a bigger threat and being able to attack past the Inspector. Just need to maximize the ways of crewing Sky Sovereign. Ooh, Chain War was unfortunate. Kills Rimrock Knights. Alright, hopefully we find another creature with our clue token and our next draw step. Alright, another Rimrock will do. So now I probably pump play Rimrock crew kill Chain Warlord. And attack for nine. All right, opponent will need another removal spell for Rimrock Knights. A lightning strike face. That's bad news. Probably means we're dead to another burn spell. Well, we're at one. Ooh. Well, that seems like a mistake from our opponent then. They could have prevented us from crewing the Sky Sovereign. Maybe they miscounted. Either way, Lightning Helix would have been a nice draw as well. Alright, so... 
close game here against Mono Red Burn. So yeah, overall, this uh, Dwarf Tribal deck has some cool synergies, especially once we get to go off with Magda. Didn't quite get to see as much of Magda plus Augusta as I would have liked, but that's also part of the deck. And uh, Augusta plus Glorybringer, also neat combo since we can untap the Glorybringer despite exerting it. So there's definitely some neat combos throughout the deck. Could also see adding another Sky Sovereign to the deck after seeing how much work it did in our games today. Maybe replacing Goldspan Dragon, so there's definitely a lot of flexibility there. As we mentioned in the introduction, we could also think about adding some Planeswalkers like Chandra or Gideon, but at that point we're maybe diluting some of our Dwarf and Vehicle synergies. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.